Hi everyone, my name is Joseph and in this video we're going to look at using motors with the Crumble controller. So we've got a couple of different motors here. We've got a standard um, motor with no gearing on it. Uh, you can use these with the Crumble normally if you've already got these. You can connect them directly to the motor outputs. You might need pulleys or gears or um, put a fan on the end of it. Um, and we also sell these uh, geared motors which have a normal motor in but also a gearbox so they produce a nice slow rotation and we have wheels that simply slot onto the shaft and you can quickly make buggies and other things. Okay, so I've got all my parts ready. I've got a USB cable here to connect the crumble, the crumble itself, battery box, uh, the motor with a wheel on and some cockleys. So we're gonna connect these up and then write a quick program to tell the crumble to control the motor. So first things first, I'll get my power source, the battery box and connect that to the crumble. And as before, I'm gonna use the red lead four plus. So plus on the battery box to plus on the crumble. And then a black lead for minus, minus or negative on the battery box to negative on the crumble. And then I'm gonna connect my motor. So there's two motor outputs on the crumble. Um, we have motor one on the left and motor two on the right at the bottom. So I'm gonna connect this motor to motor one. So connect my motor up. There, done. So, uh, we're going to connect the crumble to the computer now. Uh, using the USB cable. And turn the power on. Um, I'm going to write a quick program to see if we can get the motor to turn. So, we're going to drag a program start block again across to the uh, screen. So, it's very important you always start the program with a program start block and we're gonna drag a motor command on here. So you can see there's a few options on the motor block. The first number here, motor one, changes between one and two when you click on it. Um, and that tells the crumble which motor you're controlling. So we're gonna say motor one, because that's where we've connected our motor. Uh, we've got an option here for direction. So we've got forward, reverse, and stop. So depending on what your motor is connected to, forward might mean different things. Uh, and then we've got a percentage speed, so this defaults at 75%, so we're just gonna leave that low. So if I run my program now, we should see the motor start to spin. And you can see a little LED is lit on the crumble as well, um, and this just indicates that that motor output is actually on. So if I stop the program, the program stops. So if we write a quick test to see the forward and backwards is working correctly. So if I drag in a loop forever, or do forever loop, um, add the motor block in, we'll wait one second, we'll add another motor block in, wait another second, and we'll tell the second motor block that uh, we want it to go backwards. Um, and we'll press play, and we should see that the motor is alternating between the two directions. Okay, so if we look at our program again, uh, we can see we're switching between forward and reverse. So let's just test that the stop works. So you can see the speed disappears when we select stop because there's only one speed for stop. <laughs> um, so if we press play now, we can see the motor turns for a second and then stops. So there's lots of uh, activities and projects you can do with just one motor. It could be a model of a wind turbine or um, a fairground ride. Um, lots of things like that. But if we use both motors, uh, we can do something more interesting. We can start making little vehicles and buggies. So now that we've got one motor working on the crumble, we can try and get two motors working on the, on the crumble and build a simple buggy. So I've got uh, two motors here, two wheels, and I've got this uh, clip from our friends at UK STEM um, that is just going to make it easy to show you how to build a buggy. But you could use um, a bit of cardboard or anything you can stick two motors to. And we have various kits as well. Um, that you can use. So first thing I'm going to do is just slot my two motors into the clip. Um, slot my two motors into the clip like so and I'm going to put my two wheels on each motor. And uh, that's the basic buggy built really. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to see if I can attach the battery box and crumble to the back of the buggy. So I've got a little bit of 
um, plastic separator there. Put that on there. Battery box on there. Crumble on top. And I'm going to secure it a very high tech way using elastic bands. So this is just an example of how you could put a buggy together. So once I've got my crumble on there, I'm going to connect uh, this motor to um, output 2 and this motor to output 1. And then I'm going to connect my battery box up to the crumble. Again, I'm sticking to my convention of using uh, red wires for positive and black wires for negative. I'm going to plug my crumble in. Uh, so I've connected my crumble to the computer so we can send a program to it now. So let's try and um, make this robot go forwards. So I'm going to use two motor blocks to turn both the motors on to see if we can make the robot go forwards. So start with the program start. Um, first motor block, second motor block, and we're going to say motor two go forward as well. So let's just see what happens when I send this program. So I'm going to turn the battery box on and send my program. And you can see that didn't actually go forwards. And there's a good reason for that. OK, so you can see there that the robot didn't go forwards. It tried to turn on the spot. So actually, it looked like one motor was going forwards while the other was going in reverse, causing the robot to rotate. And the reason for that is, if you imagine this motor turning one way, if you flip it on this side, it actually turns the other way now. So to make it easy, what we can do is swap over the motor that went, or we thought went backwards. So if we swap the plus and minus over on the crumble, this will actually turn the other way now. So we try that program again. The robot now goes forwards. So now we know how we can make our robot go forwards. We just set both motors to go forwards. And if we want our robot to turn, We'll set one motor go, going forwards and one going backwards. So let's try that. So if I say um, motor one is going in reverse, motor two is going forwards. If I send that as a test, you can see our robot rotates on the spot. Knowing these two pieces of information, we can actually get our robot to move anywhere we want. So let's see if we can make the robot go in a square. So I'm going to say both motors forwards for one second and then we'll say motor one forwards but motor two reverse for one second and then in fact what we'll do is we'll put that inside a loop so we can see our robot's going to go forward for one second and then turn for one second and we'll see what the result is now what we can do is turn the battery box off program the crumble by pressing play um, now the robot won't go anywhere because it's got no battery power, but we can unplug the crumble, like so, and if I turn the battery on now, it will run the last program that we sent to it. So turn the batteries on. Okay, so you can have a lot of fun building different types of buggies. We have kits available, uh, something complicated to build like the CRV um, with its jaws. Um, the Billbot, which is an easier build, but has a line follow on, so you can code the algorithm to follow a line and uh, research autonomous vehicles. Um, something simple like the motor clip, um, you can put a pen in it and draw patterns on a whiteboard, all that kind of thing. Or you could try and build your own robot, which is great fun. Uh, we'll cover more of these advanced features in future videos like the line following. Um, but that's it for now. Thanks for watching and see you next time.